the landscape of our childhood, we carry about with us for the rest of our lives. For me, it is a town that lies in a spit of land with a great tidal basin to the west and to the east, the North Sea. The High Street, with its 17th century parish church, runs due north and south, like a compass needle marking the four quarters of the globe. I went to school here in Montrose on the east coast of Scotland. As I cycled down towards the sea, the images were already forming in my mind, which were to be and still are my points of reference and comparison. That means I am an east coaster, with certain ideas of what the sea is like and what the land is like when it meets the sea. A sort of inner landscape by which I judge other seas and other coastlines. The sand of the dunes, the sword grass, the hard, smooth, tide-swept sand. In the first days of term, in early autumn, the beaches are empty. It is near the end of the fishing season, but the salmon nets still aim their arrows out to sea. The fish come nosing in, looking for the mouth of the river where they were spawned. Caught, they are trapped by their homing instinct. Along the beaches, the salmon fishers go out in their flat-bottomed boats to grapple with the cold, heavy nets. On the east coast, I learned early that fish don't come out of tins. The truth is more brutal. These fish will be in London tomorrow. The mental landscape has a river in it. The fish that have escaped the offshore nets rest for a while in the pools near the river mouth before they move on jumping the falls in broken water. Nose pointing upstream, they watch the angler's lure move through the brown water. Patiently he waits for the rise, the tug, and the sudden hum of the reel as the line goes out with the hooked fish. I can remember the smell of the mud flats at low tide. The wildfowlers lie buried like Stone Age men in their damp hides and wait for the wild geese to come honking in over the roofs of Montrose from the North Sea. My landscape has a lighthouse in it, flashing over the sea and town and into my bedroom window. Once it guided the fishing boats over the bar and into the estuary. When I was a child, a woman sat in the door of each of these houses, baiting the mile-long lines with mussels. A hundred years ago, these docks were filled with schooners, with timber from the Baltic, cargoes from the German ports. These are East Coast images. And so is this. For the East Coast has always faced threats from the sea. On this aerodrome, the pilots of the last war learned to fly Spitfires and Hurricanes. <laughs> 